see myself as an artist first. I don't think I have a career in virtual reality. That's not how I look at myself. Sego sewa guego. I'm Skawanadi. I'm a Ganyange Haga of Gahnawage, and I live and work in Jojage, aka Montreal. Okay, sweetheart. It's like marriage. <laughs> what are you prepared are you to do? <laughs> me either, me either. Oh my God. Having been now in virtual worlds and represented by an avatar for over 20 years, how do I represent myself as a native person? How can you tell an avatar is indigenous and is an avatar indigenous? You know, I don't think I even noticed it, but throughout all my work, there's always fashion or at least costumes. You know, and I've realized how important what we wear is, especially in media, what the character is wearing says so much about them. It helps to tell the story. Sorry. Can I have the arm? Yeah. Maybe. We'll see if the arm goes up the sleeve. I think it does. The collection that you will see at Indigenous Fashion Week Toronto is called Calico and Camouflage. It is a collection of resistance wear. There's got to be a trick to this. That, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. window dressers the world over are looking at this cringing. I went to Indigenous Fashion Week Toronto 2018, and that's where I was inspired to make a whole collection, which I had never done before. And I said, I want to make a fashion show, but since I've never done that in real life, I didn't think I could do it in real life, I decided to make it for my avatars. I had had this idea in my mind for a long time. I wanted to simply make our traditional ribbon shirts in camouflage instead of calico. And then I thought, why not pair them with army pants that instead of being camouflage would be calico. It would bring together these two <laughs> items of clothing that for me are very mohawk. All right. I really wanted to have a lot of ribbons. We've seen like three ribbons on a shirt, that's not so crazy, but the ribbons are really, really long, like they go to the floor, and then they're jumping off the shirts and they're going onto the pants and they're, you know, multiplying. The ribbons refer to our longevity and our resistance and our continuation, our continued life. Because I was envisioning these clothes, this collection as, you know, what to wear to the protest, I made protest signs, then gave them to the avatars. And then we also buy in Second Life a runway, okay? And now we're finally gonna have this shoot. And I film it and I watch it and it's so boring. It's so very boring. <laughs> and I was like, I don't, I don't want to show this. I don't think this is going to be an interesting piece at all. Right around then, right when I was just like, oh man, all that work and I don't even know what I'm going to do. Indigenous Fashion Week Toronto had a call out to apply to be in the runway show. And I was like, I know how to sew. I've been sewing since I was a little girl. I think my earliest memory is putting a bead on a needle. My cousin Kathleen Deerhouse taught me how to actually sew. We had an old sewing machine, the hand crank kind, you know, and uh, learned on that. Oh my God, that pink is so hard to resist. So then I was faced with having to make all those costumes. And so I started to sew and then realized I needed help. <laughs> I needed a lot of help. I think I just need to put the sleeves on right now. I finally finished two whole outfits <laughs> that were in the collection and I felt that I needed a publicity photo. I asked two wonderful, beautiful people if they would wear my outfits. They both happened to also be Banyangehaga people. That was a COVID shoot in which uh, all of us had to wear masks except the models. Tell Daddy what your sign says. Uh, it says the future is indigenous in Banyangehaga. And then that image ended up going uh, into Vogue magazine online. I was very happy about that and very amazed. The whole runway show was postponed, right? Because of COVID-19. And they contacted us and said, all right, we're gonna go virtual. What we'd like you to do is send us your outfits and we're going to put them on models and we're going to film the models on a runway. And then we're going to present the whole show as a movie. And then they shot it. 
I think it looks amazing. You know, it's super exciting to see the avatars come to life on real beautiful models. Being Uwe Hunwe has inspired most of my work. What I've been most interested in for more than 20 years is seeing Indigenous people in the future. And so I asked myself, you know, what will we look like in the future? What will we wear in the future? But also, what are we bringing from the past? What things are important to us? What are the things that we want to stand for? What are the things that we want to think about and talk about? What are the values we want to live by? Shake up your life, shake up your life.